Diego Garcia is in the middle of the Indian Ocean, about 1,000 miles from India to the north, the Chargas Archipelago. It's about 1,000 or a bit more to uh, Mauritius, which is down here. I think that might be it, but that could be Madagascar. I'm not sure. Mauritius is just off the coast of Madagascar. Uh, we now have a huge military installation there. You probably all know about it. We launched our military strikes over Afghanistan and Iraq from there, as it says in the lower right-hand corner, nearly 3,000 miles away. Uh, in the 50s, we decided this would be a good place for us to have, uh, to be able to keep watch and uh, maintain some control of the waterways down in that part of the world. And we negotiated with the United Kingdom, the possession, uh, uh, their, it being their possession, possession at the time, to build this military base. And over the next decade, through the 60s, we displaced the couple of thousand people there. We, along with the United Kingdom, displaced all these people. We moved them to the Seychelles Islands and to Mauritius, and we dropped them off on the dock there without any training, out any, without any support in terms of uh, financial support, without any jobs, and without any homes. And they were given, uh, in many cases, less than a day to leave their beloved Diego Garcia and the other two islands, Peros Banos and, the Solom and Solomon Island. Um, a little side note to sort of underscore this atrocity is that in the interest of encouraging them to leave of their own volition, in actuality, uh, that never happened. They never did leave of their own volition. They gassed all of their pet dogs. This is all documented. We, the United States, the United Kingdom, backed up vehicles to, we rounded up all their dogs, herded them into buildings there, and gassed these buildings. I had the opportunity to go to London. Uh, have any, were any of you here for the talk when Olivier Bancourt came? Great. Olivier Bancourt, who has been the leader of their search for justice, who has led the battle through the United Kingdom's courts, came here to speak in this country. And uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting him at that time or during that visit. They won their first three cases before the British courts from 1998 through 2006. In each case, the British courts determined that these people should be permitted to return to their, to their land. In each of the first two cases, the United Kingdom resorted to something called a royal decree. I think it would probably be uh, akin to presidential signing statements they overruled these high courts of the country to say that, yes, we recognize that these people have been dealt a gross injustice, but we're throwing this case out. <clears throat> the Chagosians pursued justice once again. They, they uh, uh, the 2006, the 2000, after the 2004 case, it was overthrown. The Chagosians pressed the case once again. And they, uh, won that in 2006, and then the Foreign Affairs Office declared that they were going to appeal it one more time. Now this time, the royal decree wasn't in play, but it was to be tried in the House of Lords. This may have been the report that you heard back in, I guess it probably was April of last year when Olivier was here. And the court was tried before the House of Lords uh, at the very end of June, the beginning of July last year. I was able to go over there to stand with these people as they petitioned uh, the court and to hear what transpired in the court on those days. There were about 22 of the Chagosians that were able to come up from Mauritius, where, where they now live, and again, still live in abject poverty. Uh, I had the opportunity then to sit with them and to interview them and to hear their stories. And among those stories was one that was particularly heart-wrenching. Uh, Lizette uh, Fincolt told me that she she corroborated what I have read, that many of the people jumped overboard as they were taken from their island, the thousand mile journey to Mauritius, jumped overboard in despair. Well, the House of Lords tried th this case back in June and July, and the de decision was released in October. And as you probably have heard, they lost it. Not too surprising, I suppose. They lost it three to two. There were five Lords that voted on it. Generally, Basically, the case came down to trying or to finding that national security, in this case, the uh, ally of the United Kingdom's national security, was of greater concern than the right of these people to return to their birth land, to their ancestral lands. Now, the Chagosians weren't demanding or asking that they be returned to Diego Garcia itself. I 
think basically they conclude that's not going to happen. But they were hoping that they were going to at least be allowed to return to Paros Banos, the other island I mentioned to you, and Solomon Island, which were, are on the order of 100 miles away. And they were even denied that. So the situation today for them now is that they, are, they intend to pursue this case to and through the European Court of Human Rights. I think we probably have some sense of what the United States response might be to any decision that might, that might uh, come out of that. But there is an interesting development that's happening now. There are about 39 members of parliament who have united to protest the situation that stands today. So they are actively engaged and still trying to serve justice to these people. It'll be interesting to see how that turns around. It's been expressed by some of the spokespeople of that organization, of that uh, alliance, that the hope is there that Obama may react a bit differently than the United States has, that the same sorts of pressure may not be applied on the United Kingdom's ultimate decision that uh, they certainly have been subject to thus far. So uh, that's a possibility that I intend to pay attention to, to see whether, you know, what we might be able to do as a people here in terms of making our own congressional delegation aware of it, making Obama aware of this situation.